name is Zach Goat. I'm the marketing supervisor for Diamond Select Toys. Uh, and I appreciate you taking the time on this fine Sunday. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of, not a lot of time left in the day, so thank you. Um, with me today are, uh, to my left, Jason Wires, uh, one of our main prototype painters. And to his left, uh, Eli Livingston, who is one of our primary sculptors uh, for a variety of our lines. And uh, today I'm going to show you uh, a quick rundown of some stuff we have coming up, some stuff you may have seen, uh, please bear with me, I'll show you the people who haven't, some of the stuff you may not have seen. Uh, and then after that, we'll, I'll break it up with a little Q&A session every, every uh, you know, a few slides or so, just so we can talk about what we've seen, any questions you may have that come up uh, for me or Jason or Eli. I apologize, Chuck just said I couldn't make it today, he had to fly back to uh, Maryland, but uh, I will do my best to answer any questions you might have. Uh, I'm not quite as frank as Chuck can be, uh, but I will, I'll try to be at least vaguely witty. <laughs> Failing visibly. All right. So, uh, first off, uh, we're getting close to launch on our line of products based on Alice through the Looking Glass. You can see our PVC figures here. They each has a clock base and the two of them connect together. It's a nine inch scale. Uh, Gallery is the series, the name that we're calling it now. Um, primarily, it used to be known as Femme Fatales, but we've expanded to include more male characters. So, uh, gal what galleries we're calling this. So this is Alice Gallery, we've got a Marvel Gallery, we've got DC Gallery. And uh, these will be coming out, I believe, uh, towards the end of the year. And you may have seen these select action figures. This photograph, I apologize, I meant to rescale uh, Alice to Matt Hatter, but if you see the display case downstairs, and we'll have a little time after the show if you want to get the panel if you want to do that. Uh, you'll be able to see um, that Alice is in scale with Mad Hatter, and those dioramas are actually fairly large. Uh, they're uh, at least uh, the height of the characters. And if you buy the two of them, they will connect together. You'll see the bases connect, and Series 2 will continue that diorama. Uh, there will be Series 2 with Red Queen and some other characters. Our Batman Classic TV series line, and we're going to continue our resin statue line with what we did back on Catwoman. Uh, here's the Batman, sculpted by Clay Moore. <coughs> Gene St. Jean recently delivered some new busts to the display case, including uh, the Bookworm, uh, the Mad Hatter, if we have Mad Hatter here, and uh, King Tut. We well, actually don't have a picture of he's that. He's that new, fresh off the truck from New Jersey. Uh, there is also a Joker statue by Gene St. Jean on display downstairs. It's a little bit taller than the Batman one right now, but it's going to be the same size as the Batman. And you may have seen pictures of our vinyl Shakespeare bust bank. Now this is a uh, larger than a normal bust bank, so those are usually about 70 inches tall. This one is actually more or less life size. Uh, it's, um, I forget the exact measurement, it's something like 20 inches tall. And it will have the opening head uh, to reveal a button and a switch inside. Non-function, of course, this is a vinyl bank. It will be hollow, but there's no wiring circuit inside. And, but the flip-up head will reveal a coin slot, so you can act, and then you can access the money through a uh, access port in the base. And this one is actually uh, up for pre-order. The Batman is as well. The busts are all brand new. We're just showing them for the first time today, so the, you have to wait a while for the pre-orders on those. Uh, Beetlejuice is a new license we launched. Um, I'll show you some of the Minimate product we're, we're making later on, but uh, we're going to be doing some pint glasses and Minimates. Um, nothing uh, action figural at this point, but I believe we do have some other categories that we're looking at. And I'll, I'll keep you posted about those through our social media and through our monthly mailings to news sites about our monthly previews offerings. Uh, the DC Animated Universe, we uh, have our line of bottle openers we're continuing. Harley Quinn, Joker, Green Lantern, uh, Superman. Superman's actually out now. And our resin bus line is continuing for Batman the Animated Series with the Dark Knight Batman. You may have seen the muddy edition we have here, but it will be a standard edition available at stores. Uh, Carrie Kelly Robin. Man Bat was recently solicited. Phantasm. Who should be coming out actually fairly soon. Scarecrow. Uh, and then also from Justice League, we have Aquaman. Green Lantern. We know, and at this show we unveiled Shazam, 
Now you may have seen that. Brainiac had a couple of choices from the Super, based on the Superman animated series. Our DC Gallery line covers uh, the same shows, Superman, Batman, Justice League, all those classic uh, Bruce Timm design shows. This uh, new Harley Quinn PVC figure is going to be based on there, so the man who killed Batman, and she's in her lawyer costume. Um, the Joker is the first, uh, uh, the second male figure in the line after Batman, but the Joker and Batman will be coming out this fall. And again, these are PVC figures, $45 price point. Satan, you may have seen recently solicited. Black Canary is brand new, revealed to this show, um, just went up for pre-order right before. And I apologize. Galatea uh, from the Justice League episodes will be the next one to offer. And if I remember correctly, um, I do have artwork for the Huntress. I thought I'd include in the slide presentation, but she will be the next figure in that line. Uh, the resin bust line for Justice League continues with Hawkgirl. And there you go, there's a uh, Huntress right there. Our resin statue line, which we call the Premier Collection. Uh, these are more or less 12 inch scale statues, uh, continues with uh, Holly Quinn in her nurse's outfit. Uh, Poison Ivy, we've already solicited. Uh, she should be coming out this fall. This is again from the episode that uh, almost got him. Uh, in, in her segment, she poisons the town's pumpkin patch. And here you can see our Superman gallery piece. This is one of our PVC figures. That covers the DC items. Uh, are there any questions so far about anything you've seen yet? Or just any questions you just can't bear to wait any longer to ask? Just so we're not staring at slides the whole time. Have a little chat between. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Anthony. What about villains for the bus? Uh, villains for the bus. Justice League Unlimited. I'm sorry? Justice League Unlimited villains. Justice League Unlimited. Um, I believe. Specifically Justice League Unlimited, I don't know about that, but we do have some, I think we do have a, a, a Mr. Freeze design for Batman the Animated Series. That's not Justice League exactly. Um, Brainiac is from Superman, so technically no. Um, I'm drawing a blank on who might be fitting, who might fit into that Justice League category that we had one time. Like, I don't think we have a Vandal Savage plan or anything like that, but I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on who on our list is Technically, would technically consider Justice League. Obviously, just did a Lex Luthor. Um, so, villains are not out of the question, um, but obviously, there's a lot of big Batman villains and uh, just Justice League heroes that we'd like to get to. I mean, uh, I think we have the Flash design in the works, for instance, um, which, as great as the villains are, you know, you've got to be a Flash. Yeah. So, um, but if you have any suggestions that anybody has for characters they'd like to see in that line, we don't really have any plans of you know cutting it off anytime soon, so we have uh, another you know year's worth of product that we're that we're planning on rolling out. So feel free to send your suggestions into uh, the website. Um, the president Chuck Tercera answers questions in uh, his Ask DST column at artisound.com, and uh, you can submit through that form there or through uh, dinosauritoys.com. We'll, we'll get all those emails. Any other questions, Anthony? I hope I hope that answered yours to a certain extent. Anyone? All right, we'll keep going. You guys can really see stuff that we're not going to be talking. Let's see. Um, Ghostbusters. What do you want? Uh, the Slimer of Ceramic Bank, which I can't believe that we have nobody that made a Slimer Bank. If someone knows one, I please correct me. But um, this uh, means they do the show and actually just opened up for pre-order as well. So uh, this is a new item for us. A new uh, category for us for Ghostbusters, actually. Uh, but it joins other kitchenware stuff we've done for Ghostbusters, including pizza cutters, bottle openers, and these tumblers, which are upcoming, um, inspired by old fast food tumblers of yesteryear. Exactly. Yes? You said it was a bank, but it could be done, right? Did I say bank? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Why did you stop me soon? Throw years. things at me. Yeah, no, the, I thought the, the vinyl slime bank you guys all already know. No, this is a cookie jar. This is a cookie jar. Uh, the head comes off. I actually have that alternate image somewhere. You can keep money in it, I suppose. Some people keep money in a cookie jar. I'm not going to tell you where to keep your cash you know, in this day and age. But uh, no, that is definitely a ceramic cookie jar. I apologize. It's been a long weekend, folks. 
Um, thank you very much, Daniel. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, <laughs> these are definitely tumblers, though. And they're not um, uh, oil filters or something else that I make. Oh, okay. You keep money in those. You keep money in those. You need money in, in you can't keep money in these, but you can keep money in a nice glass on your, on your kitchen table if you'd like. Uh, Ghostbusters actually did a line, uh, obviously you've all seen it. Um, the Series 3's uh, in the production sample stage, I don't think we have full package samples yet, but those you can see some of those figures, uh, production samples of these figures down in the display case. The Series 3, uh, with the um, interchangeable Slimer heads for Slimer, of course, and the uh, Quit in Time Ray. And uh, these three figures at specialty stores and comic shops will include a piece of that uh, rooftop diorama. Uh, so that's uh, 15 figures uh, with uh, more than 15 pieces uh, to build that diorama. So they're going to be rolling out through the middle of 2017. Uh, series 3 should be out this fall. Series 4, we haven't actually solicited it yet. Um, we're still pinning down uh, the look of the slime Peter figure in that series. But he'll join uh, Walter Peck and Gozer for Series 4. Let me see if I picture it. That's series five. That's series four. There's, a, there's, a, there's an early cut. I don't know why that just did that. Um, but Peter, uh, there's an early con, uh, comic control art for Peter, and a reference for the sculptor. It does include different sculpted parts. It's not just a repaint. Let's see what we have here. Error guard, I think. Oh, I guess I can. Um, you can see Peck and Ghost. We've shown them a bunch of times. Peck and Ghost have done series. But the series five would be the library ghost, uh, the taxi driver ghost. Does not like them at all, doing that. Moving things. And the terror dog. Uh, it will have interchangeable forms. So it's the same one figure, buy it twice, and you'll have the terror dog. It actually doesn't come with any large, bulky parts of the diorama because of its size, but it does come with the backdrop that goes behind the portal. So uh, that will be a uh, roll in the package for that. Yes, and there will be, um, you know, I meant to include the large version of the I'm not going to try to access it right now. I'm going to screw something up. But um, you can see it right there next to the uh, library ghost. Um, one of these figures, and I'm still, I think we're still pinning down exactly what will come with which figure, uh, but um, one of the figures will come with the with each of the stone uh, dogs from the rooftop. Gotham. We went to Gotham Series 3, uh, we've seen this before obviously, but um, those are actually production samples down in the display case. You can see that the, uh, the bookcase has actually enlarged slightly, it's uh, much taller now. Um, that's not uh, an in-scale picture obviously. Uh, all of these back uh, diagrams are, are slightly at smaller scale, but the, the gate goes over Barbara Keen's head from Arkham Asylum. Uh, the alleyway is a little bigger for uh, Mr. Zaz, and that bookcase is uh, pretty tall for Bruce Wayne. I believe he, uh, his head is well under that metal bar you can see there below the second shelf. Uh, but uh, so we get a couple of those, you can show up a nice little Wayne library. Um, series 4 we're still working on, uh, but it will be a very cool lineup on the unveil. I hope it will be unveiled in this fall in time for the new series or shortly after the new series reviews. And I think we're looking to get Series 3 out of stores by then as well. Uh, another. Warner Brothers TV show based on comics that we work on by Zombie. Uh, you may have seen our Zombie action figure. Uh, we're offering this pint glass here, and we are working on a new iZombie uh, action figure as well, uh, a new version of Liv Moore in a different outfit uh, that we hope will be unveiling. Uh, I think we're going to try to unveil it by New York Comic Con, but we'll see how that works out. Lost in Space, we've released two different versions of B9. One was the standard version at comic shops, and one was a gold version, a golden boy version at um, uh, Newberry Comics, there's a Newberry Comics exclusive. You can order it online to newberrycomics.com. Uh, and they have completely different dialogue. The Golden the Boy version is all a very smug, pompous dialogue from from that episode uh, where he appeared, but also from, uh, from other episodes where he was just generally smug and pompous. And this is the Anti-Matter one, where he's actually um, from the Anti-Matter Man, uh, some dialogue from that, but also just some generally negative, dark dialogue from, uh, from B9. And we are looking to expand our line of electronic robots, so uh, we're going to be making some more. We've had, we obviously have a lot of fun with electronic vehicles, and the reaction to being been great, so we're going to look at making some more famous movie or TV robots that uh, would fit into this sort of scale and uh, category of product. 
Uh, I'll do one more license for just a little break. Uh, Mall Rats, uh, action figure, you can see here Jay uh, with his accessory sock four quarters, baseball bat, and he's got the uh, store diagram uh, background, uh, so you can connect all four diagrams to form a mall. Uh, Jay with the Little Bean Series 1 along with Brody, who obviously has a comic shop behind him. And Series 2 will be Renee and Silent Bob. And Silent Bob will come with interchangeable parts, including the grappling gun and the um, utility belt, which you can see down right there, and uh, the ear you're wearing goggle on your head. And these are all obviously 7 inch scale select action figures. We're still in the prototype stage, I think, for, for all four of them. But uh, I think we're looking to get them out by the end of the year. Now let's stop right there before we go on to Marvel, because uh, that's going to raise a lot of questions, I'm sure. Any questions so far about anything you've seen, uh, Ghostbusters, um, Small Rats, Boston Space, anything like that? Yes, in fact. Are you going to make the new Ghostbusters as well? The we we're making a line of mini mates, uh, the two-inch mini figures for the new movie, but we actually don't have the action figure rights for that particular film. Maybe in the future, that'd be fantastic. Uh, right now, we already do have our arms full with, uh, with the, uh, the classic movie, that is a, a pretty big cost project for us. But I'd love to do it, um, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not that guy. I just, I just promote it. Uh, I'm sure Chuck would, would love to do it too. I don't know if you've actually seen it, I'm pretty sure he has. But um, no, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's fun to work on the mini mates and hopefully we can expand that into other categories, especially you know, now that there's a lot more confidence consumer confidence and retail confidence behind the film. Anyone else? Questions? Yeah. I'm going to move on to Marvel. Uh, let's see, uh, starting off with our Marvel gallery line. I mentioned these before, the nine inch scale DC figures. You've seen this Ant-Man, based on the movie costume, obviously. This is um, one of the closer ones to release. We recently put out the first three, Captain Marvel, um, Thor, Goddess, Lady Deadpool, and we have the exclusive Captain Marvel uh, and Spider One, the Mass Spider One downstairs. But Deadpool will be joining this line. Um, right here, he's got the Legends of Chains. No, this is the vinyl line. This is the PVC figure line. Uh, it, um, it's slightly larger in the case. Um, uh, it was sculpted a little bit larger than, than normal size, but the uh, but it's going to be a nine-inch scale piece. There was some confusion there, there possibly at one point. Um, with uh, customers, but no, it's a nine-inch PPC figure. This will be $45 for just a retail price in that same window box that you see now with fatalis and gallery figures in. Um, same goes for just Doctor Strange, uh, who's sculpted by Phil Ramirez, I'm saying. Yeah. And um, the Hulk, uh, which might be a Sandy in yeah. the And we recently unveiled Jewel, Jessica Jones' Jewel. Oh, is that Ferrera? Alejandro Ferrera, one of our newer sculptors. And uh, Spider Friends is the Gene St. Gene. This is the mask version. This will be out um, fairly soon, I think. Uh, I'm sure production came on the tail end of the uh, unmasked version that we have downstairs. So. Now, this is not a PVC figure or even a resin statue. This is actually a model kit. Uh, so, we're going to be selling a build it yourself, brew it yourself, paint yourself model kit of Deadpool. We've recently re-offered some of the old and novel model kits from the 60s and 70s, uh, and then this is uh, actually also from the 90s, uh, or I think it was a Wolverine uh, one of the kit that we offered in the late 90s or the early 2000s. But this is an all new sculpt, uh, along with the Thor and the Iron Man you see on the display case. But you can pre-order this now, and it's going to come. You may have seen a white version on the display case. I'm pretty sure that's the final base color that we're going to offer him in, but um, you can take that starting point and paint him you know, whatever costume you like. Uh, I'm sure, I believe there's a couple different. Deadpool costumes that would fit this uh, particular sculpting pattern. So you could choose whichever color costume you like and go for it. Um, and I believe that each one will come with an interchangeable head, so you can use either the unmasked head or the masked head. Uh, the Premier Collection, again, our resin statues, uh, more or less 12 inch scale. Uh, this is our Gamora, it's a Gene St. Gene. That last one is, I believe, Paul Harden, by the way, that Deadpool model kit. This is a Gene St. Gene sculpt Gamora. Uh, Clayburn Moore's Rogue, and Clay's Spider Gwen. These are all up for pre order right now. These are about $150 to get some retail price. Uh, Marvel Select, uh, we recently reissued our 
alongside the Venom figure of Hygiene, um, which is uh, available now in stores. Yes, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, this is Carnage on this slide. Thank you, this is, he's doing his job, he's correcting me. Um, but uh, I was just going to mention Venom, I didn't show Venom because he's out, but uh, Carnage will be next. Um, so, sorry about that. Yeah, Carnage will be next and he's gonna be coming out um, in the next couple of months. So, uh, if you didn't get a chance to get them the first time, check your local store, see if they're getting them in. If you can reserve some um, something on pre-order, make something happen there. I haven't checked around to see how many sites still have uh, pre-orders available for Carnage, but uh, we expect them to be still pretty much in demand, even though this is our second run on it. Uh, we recently developed Destroyer. Uh, he led the interchangeable Odin head during that time that uh, Odin put on Destroyer armor and got in a fight with Thor. And, uh, Obviously, uh, many different people have worn the Odin, the Odin armor in the past, but um, uh, he also carries the Odin sword. So whether you like that storyline where he fought Thor, or the storyline story where he fought the Celestials, um, this is that, that destroyer that we're looking at. And uh, I snapped a couple quick picks because he just got here at the show. Uh, they're not very good ones, but uh, the Doctor Strange uh, select action figure is on display in the case. And he does, uh, it does come with the Sanctum Sanctorum diorama base. And we're aiming to have him out around the time of the movie, you know, hopefully by the end of the year, he'll be in stores. And our Civil War figures, in case you were wondering, I don't have slides in here, but the uh, Iron Man, Cap, and Winter Soldier will be rolling out very shortly. Iron Man, I believe, ships August 3rd to comic shops, and uh, Cap and Winter Soldier should be right behind him. Uh, before I move on to Muppets, are there any questions about Marvel? Marvel stuff that I showed. Yes, sir. Any update on the Remigo figures? Remigo. Uh, Daredevil ships, I want to say this Wednesday, the Daredevil retro set. Uh, the next set will be um, a variant exclusive set that we really did for a specific retailer. I don't know when they're going to be announcing that, um, but I can't wait until they do because it's very cool. Um, and I will let everybody know on social media and website as soon as it is announced because it's really neat. Um, it's a character we've already done. It's a variant on one of those, but it's uh, it's different costumes and very cool. And it will be through one detail. Uh, yes, sir? Any updates on the Watcher reissue? The Watcher reissue we weren't able to make happen. Uh, obviously, we'll keep checking back to see when it will be possible to do, but right now it's not something that we can really even have on the schedule at this time. There's a lot of other Marvel guys that we you know, want to get back to who either need a new run, like Venom and Carnage, uh, or are being released by the Disney store that we'd like to get a run in on uh, for specialty stores, or um, just new characters that we haven't gotten around to. There's gonna be one more announcement for uh, comic shops before the end of the year, uh, who is a female Marvel character, and there, I believe there'll be at least one more Disney store exclusive to be revealed at some point before the end of the year. I think they'll be definitely released before the end of the year, so. I'll definitely keep everybody posted about that with new, um, new press releases and, and social media posts. And if you're not following us on social media, uh, facebook.com slash dinosaur toys or twitter.com slash collect DST or Instagram slash collect DST too, I'm on there as well. But uh, we're having a contest on Twitter and Facebook where you can enter to win one of every one of our Comic Con exclusives. Uh, we'll need not to be able to ship it to your house, but. Um, go on there and like the page or follow us and share or retweet then you're under the win. Any other questions, Marvel related? Or any other questions, right? I think he's stretching, but all right. Uh, are there gonna be Deadpool 2? I'm sorry? Are there gonna be Deadpool 2? Deadpool 2? Um, I believe they're working on Deadpool 2, the movie. I don't know if we're going to do anything for it specifically, but we'd love to. So we're, we'll keep talking to them about it and maybe we can make something happen there. That'd be awesome. I love it. Uh, let's move on to Muppets. If anybody has any questions, then uh, I'll take another break in a few minutes. Uh, Muppets Series 2, uh, the ones in the case are actually uh, production samples, so we're getting very close on that. Um, I believe they should be up this fall. And we recently unveiled and opened pre-orders for Series 3. Series 2, by the way, uh, Sam and Waldorf do come with a balcony uh, at the comic shops and specialty stores in that larger select packaging. Uh, outside of specialty stores, there, there's, there's the Toys R Us versions, uh, which is a more basic packaging and only includes the figures and not the diorama bases. 
Uh, series three includes uh, Ralph with uh, Crazy Harry and Mana Mana. And Floyd comes with Janice. And Miss Piggy comes with Foo Foo the Dog and the Penguin. And there are additional guitar accessories and other accessories there as well. I hope you didn't like that. Let's go back to series two. Uh, remember those Ghostbusters tumblers I showed you? We're going to do them for the monthly show too. Um, we already have some Back to the Future ones that are kind of similar as well, if you've seen those. But then we got this new art made up, uh, featuring a lot of the classic characters. They're a lot of fun. Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, this is series two. Uh, it's on the figures on their actual production samples, so those should be out on track for release uh, prior to Halloween. Uh, series 3 was, uh, I think we were originally thinking about doing that as a Christmas release, but that may end up being 2017 release. I gotta check on that. We haven't solicited those to retailers just yet. And there were one with uh, Santa Claus and Lock, Shock, and Barrel and Pumpkin King. I don't have a picture of that one there, but uh, we've shown the prototypes at a couple of different shows so far. Uh, the Cloth Dolls will continue with an unlimited version of Jack, so if you miss Jack the first time, we're gonna come back with a new Jack Coffin Doll. Uh, we have a Santa Jack and Santa Sally two-pack, uh, which is limited, uh, that double coffin, but we will eventually do them individually as Santa as singles uh, in a single coffin, which will be more unlimited. So if you can't get the two-pack, we'll have some of that available. Do you know if they're all available? I'm sorry? Do you know if they're available still? The limit? Yeah. Uh, the limited edition. Uh, all the limited editions for the Nightmare figures are 1993, 1993 pieces. Um, so, that's, that include, that's for the original Jack that we did, the original Sally we did, and then I guess the Santa Jack. I don't remember if we limited Pumpkin King and um, Pajama Jack. We may have done limits on those as well, but the unlimited Jack is, is going to be shipping soon, um, and the unlimited Sally. And Hot Topic had a couple of exclusives last year. I think we're going to do another alternate head for them again this year. Uh, I think they're going to have the same color coffin again. It was a purple coffin. Uh, what year did the movie come out? I, I, it may actually not have come out in it, it might have been 1992, in which case one of us just made one too many, but um, I'm pretty sure we used the year of the release for that edition. Because for our Batman statues, we did uh, 1966, um, limited edition for our Catwoman and Batman, Bat, uh, Batgirl statues. And we'll do the same for Batman and for Joker. Uh, the DC animated statues we have not been limited, uh, the premier collection statues. So the Harley that we did, we did 3,000. And the, uh, the yeah, I think the Poison Ivy one we did 3,000. 93? So we got it right. Awesome. Great. That's why, I was, that's why I was less confident when I asked you about when we came out, because I, I wasn't there. Was I couldn't remember if we messed it up or not. Here's the Solo Sally. Uh, I don't know if actually the head is Final Solo Sally, because I think it's going to be a different head from the two pack. Uh, but we are going to, there's the unlimited Sally to bring her back and uh, with a new head and Finkelstein and the mayor. I should mention all these like reproductions of those classic dolls uh, that were released in Japan um, back in the 90s. So uh, if you know those, or these are kind of the same thing. They'll, those will be released in window boxes, Finkelstein and the mayor, because uh, they will not fit in a coffin. Maybe upside down the mayor should fit in a coffin. I don't know, I don't know but Finkelstein. Uh, crazy drastic gear change to Predator uh, from Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, not two properties you see uh, following each other in the slide presentation very often. Uh, we are doing uh, another bottom up from Predator, which is the uh, uh, Smart Disc. Now, you may have accidentally seen it referred to as a glaive at one point, uh, but the glaive was obviously, of course, the way it was the Predator's staff and not the flying disc weapon that he uses. And whoever made that mistake should obviously be fired. Uh, and that was absolutely not me. Um, but that is in production, it should be coming out this fall. You can pre-order that now. Uh, switching gears again, because Predator, we actually don't have anything else figure roll that we're working on right now. Um, just a minute. I don't think it's off the table, um, but I don't know that we have any new ones in development. Eli, do you think we do Predator or Banks in development? I'm not aware. Okay. When we do, we will have Eli and Tommy Rowling some working on it. Because he sculpted uh, the mask and unmasked Predator Banks, uh, as well as uh, all of our aliens. Uh, well, except for the Queen. We did uh, the Warrior, the Big Chap, and uh, the Egg, yes. And Jean did the Queen. And Jean did the Queen. 
And we actually have another bank that I don't think is in the slide presentation down at our, our, uh, our display. He brought uh, the Fluke Man from X Files as their first X Files vinyl bank. So if you have a chance to check it out, maybe have some time after this. So Plants vs. Zombies, so you may have seen the first series of action figures from the first game. Uh, we did another one point, another deluxe series, and then we did a series of variant characters for Toys R Us, uh, series 1.5, if you will. Um, yeah, but now these are all based on the new game, Dark Warfare 2. Uh, obviously the game's already out, but uh, we've been working on these, and uh, I think they came out pretty cool. Uh, a lot of great new character designs in that particular game. Uh, I think we're aiming for an end of the year release on these as well. Uh, Star Trek, uh, you may have seen our Star Trek TNG phaser prototype in a couple different shows. It is in development, uh, we're finalizing the electronics, um, and as soon as we have the electronics finalized, we're going to solicit it uh, to retailers, and you can go and pre order will open up on it. I uh, can see here one of the light tests that we did. Here's a couple different angles. Our Star Trek Select series uh, continues with MovieCon. Uh, and we recently announced that we'll be doing a Borg next. Uh, but uh, the prototype wasn't quite ready for San Diego. Apologies for that, but they'll go unveiled as soon as it is ready. Uh, Khan is still in prototype form, but um, I think we're looking to get him out later on this year as well. He does have alternate parts so he can uh, sit in his chair, and the armrests actually uh, fold down and lock over the legs like they do in the movie. to see that, that's top secret. Uh, Star Trek, uh, the Romulan version, for anybody who took a picture of that, just delete that right now. That was totally, totally not supposed to be seen. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. Um, the Romulan version for Starship, Starship. electronic Starship. Uh, I have seen ones that light up. I know they exist. They won't give me one, and I want one, but they won't give it to me, so I'm waiting for them to get one that lights up so that I can make a cool video and like make pew pew sounds. Actually, I don't even need to make the pew pew sounds, it makes the pew pew cut sounds itself, so uh, I'm, I'm very excited to get one of those. Um, all the lights, all the windows light up, it's, it's, it's really neat. Um, and it's got a lot of classic dialogue from Mark, I believe from Mark Leonard, uh, who played that Romulan commander. Uh, very, very cool dialogue. It's, it's the list of dialogues that was, I saw it makes out of there to me very, very neat, especially when you're a fan of Mark Leonard, because he's not a fan. And next up after the Romulan Bird of Prey is, the, of course, the Reliant um, from the uh, from the Star Trek Arachnicon. So um, we're working hard on that. Uh, be a nice little companion to our uh, Arachnicon Enterprise. And hopefully people dig it. Uh, I'm sure they'll have some cool dialogue. But uh, obviously still finalizing the sculpting and painting stages. I think sculpting might be done, but painting is... Uh, painting and tempo and the, the, the printed decals and, and details are... are uh, can be a little overwhelming, so we're, we're, we're kind of finalizing that. Uh, another drastic uh, subject matter shift. Um, one of our new licenses that we acquired is uh, Vacation. Uh, you may have recently seen these offered uh, through previews, um, and we're going to be doing a bunch of different stuff with Vacation, but um, one of the things is pint glasses. So we're just going to start off with these. and. Uh, uh, so there's two different varieties of Wally World. One with just Marty Moose and one with the whole gang from Wally World. I do not ask them to name all the characters who live in Wally World. I, I, I do not know them. But I love that movie. Uh, and just real quick, um, our Vinnie Mae's Mile Figure line is, been, is kicking into high gear. We've got a lot of stuff coming out for it. You've seen the Alice ones that we offered. There's a new Cheshire Cat on display downstairs. Uh, aliens actually will be coming out very soon. We've got package samples for those. These are four inches tall. They're designed like our mini mates, mini figures, but they're actually you know, dynamically posed. Um, and they have articulated heads so you can have them look in you know, whatever direction and you know, give a lot of different attitude to that pose adjustment. Ghostbusters, inspired by that classic movie poster, them all looking up at the uh, threat above them. Uh, B9, from Lost in Space. Nightmare Before Christmas. We also have a Santa Jack that we're, that we're going to offer at the future date. Predator, you may have seen a clear one, a cloaked Predator we're going to offer at a future date. And Beetlejuice, uh, you can see here our Lydia uh, design up there. And then please tell me I have, yep, there he is. He's down in the split case as well. And also um, uh, Buddy from Elf. Do I have one more here? 
Yes, Iron Giant is uh, another license we recently got. We're going to do a bunch of different stuff with Iron Giant, but we're going to start off with this uh, being made here. And there will be a new made figures as well as some other stuff. So, and that is the end of my slide presentation. And it is 3.38, which means I have a little time left to take some questions. Oh, thank you. I'll pass all that applause along to the uh, BST staff who actually physically work on these products and actually make them. Um, not just these guys, but uh, the guys back at the home office who you know, work for the factory and work for the uh, licensors and, uh, and all the different artists and, and, and people of the sculptors who work on these projects. So, you know, we can have a similar kind of stuff. But um, are there any more questions that anybody would like to ask? Uh, I'm going to remember who's asking the good questions. There's actually a bag of cool stuff here that I was going to give to some of the best questions at the end of the day. Anyone? Yes, Anthony. How about four queen and seven inch scale? Four queen and seven inch scale. I think it's one we considered. Actually, so we've developed a whole action line of four action figures. Um, that was one of the last things we offered for Star Trek. And orders for some of the last assortments of Star Trek were very, very low. And it was before my time to remember exactly what that seemed up with in terms of Star Trek media or the general interest in Star Trek. Um, but the sales were not there for us to go forward. Uh, yes, we worked on that a very long time ago. We actually did look at a little bit of the, uh, the board action figure that we did for that line, the basics for when we were looking at this new board and thinking what we could do there. Um, oh, did you think an alcove? Yeah, I don't know if we actually prot if you prot can't remember painting it, and you must have prototyped it. I'm pretty sure it exists. Um, and I think we are already looking to see what the status of that is. But um, yeah, it was a whole sort of stuff, and you didn't have to turn the TLS with it, but it's the orders weren't there at the time. So when we came back to Star Trek Action Figures, we made it a lot. We made it typically in one, one, one at a time releases, just so we weren't you know, overwhelming the Star Trek fan base with, with, with stuff that maybe. Well, but we're, you know, we're not going to do the response to the select figures. But the focus on that is for characters who are you know, iconic and you know, maybe you know, a, a, a purchase even for a casual Star Trek fan who may like some of the characters. So we're not going to be building for teams or crews, rather. Um, but for a it's definitely a good, a good uh, idea for a figure. And if, um, if the board figure does well, then I can see why we would think of her you know, immediately. Any other questions? Uh, yes, in the ratios. What are people's preferences working with licenses? Uh, working with licenses? Um, I mean, you know, every license is different. Uh, every license has something they look at more closely. Um, so it's hard to say just blanket, whatever. Um, you know, so it's, it, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say anything bad about licenses. There, you know, there are a lot of them, it's, it's very lucky to be able to work with the stuff that they've created, that they, they have created. But the, um, you know, we communicate to them the, the intricacies of the production process and, you know, how we can actually capture, you know, how detailed we can get to some of the work that we do. Obviously, we're reproducing a six foot tall person at a six inch tall, seven inch tall scale. And there are limitations. And, you know, we've obviously seen some great work at all scales. You know, we've seen figures at all scales that are just, oh, that's great. But at some point, we have to let some detail go. And we have to, we have to, there are actually compromises in certain cases, and I think that we do a good job of, uh, you know, communicating uh, the, the detail of that, you know, costume and character to, you know, in that scale. But um, it's a it's a trick to communicate to to the licenses that, you know, what what is possible and available because they also want to go the right thing as best as can, and you know, we can blame them, but uh, but we need to at some point tell them what we can do and what we can't do. And you know, we, we don't want to say we you know, don't want to do our best job. It's just that sometimes the best job is, is a little bit short of what they are available for. A lot of times, too, when it comes to like painting prototypes, a lot of times when you're dealing with licensors, still, especially with all older stuff like Ghostbusters and all that, you know, you'll ask for you know images of actors' faces to capture the likenesses, and you're dealing with VHS tapes, you know, that aren't digitally remastered. You don't have really any images from anything but the images. <coughs> So it's really hard sometimes to interpret, or they don't supply you with like Pantone numbers or anything like that. So when you're trying to paint like a costume, you know, you might have to paint the thing three or four times before they approve it.
because you're going back and forth and sometimes the Lexus don't have access to it. And like sometimes the Lexus are just plain lazy or often can't tell them and walk down to where the stuff is and just flip through it and find the number. So it just varies on that. But yeah, it can be um, very aggravating sometimes, but then also some, some devices are very helpful. And also, even even with newer phones, um, we need to get that reference early. Um, and we start working on Marvel Select, for instance, we would actually do it very early. But um, not a lot of license stores, not a lot of, not a lot of licensees ask for things like pictures of the background, so you can make a diorama, or pictures of you know this for the accessory. And we're very diorama oriented, so that can be a problem getting that stuff, um, uh, just because it's not something that necessarily prepared to, to offer, you know, when they put together their package stuff for licensees, licensees, they want to include, you know, well, what's this wall we're standing in front of? Can we get a picture of that wall? You know, we, we may use early teaser trailers as reference, you know, put leaked photographs from the internet, but we need that something official, you know, and something high quality to use for, for that sort of stuff, and that can be hard, for, especially with new movies, especially as they're working on the movies, it may not be available, and that can, that, that can be the difference between getting something out when the movie hits and getting something out three months after the movie hits. Uh, oh, no problem. Daniel, you have a question? Have you guys looked at all the uh, Star Trek Discovery before the uh, I think we've made inquiries, but I don't, I don't think anything's been uh, decided or I don't think it's been made either way. But uh, I, I, think, I believe they have been interested in, in um, working on the show in some capacity. You know, I don't know what's available or not. Who else is involved? Um, nothing, no, I don't believe there's any, anything. I believe there's anything to report. I mean, there's definitely nothing to report. I don't think there's anything to report. Uh, uh, yes, I'm sorry, there's anything on that. Like compound. 
for the larger subjects like the uh, big chap and uh, the flute man, which are on display right now, I use uh, our great Chabon. I think you might have time for one more question. Uh, yes, yes. How do you guys decide what makes it? I apologize if I haven't been repeating the questions for people in case you can't hear them, but he's asking about how you decide what makes it sad, who decides um, you know, what to do. You were giving us a good example of a rendition, you know, rendering of a character. I mean, Chuck Scherzer as the president does most of the media decline planning, since he's the one who's got to write the checks for all this stuff, and yeah. he's got to do it. And answer if it doesn't sell, he, he tends to he'd be the one who you know, says, why don't you do this character, these characters? You know, we, we all meet and agree on stuff, but, um, but he's the one who does this for what to do. And, you know, if it fits into the format of the proposable action figure, then that's great. But like that particular thing to do, like fit her into a, a diorama or a chair with the arms. I mean, that sounds like a really cool, like maybe a cool statue. Um, whether you can make that work in an articulated piece where the figure is removable from that, that, that would actually all be very cool. But he had a vision for the Ghostbusters rooftop, for instance. He said, I want to do this. And you know, what, what's the diorama we make that's going to you know, build? Let's do the rooftop. And then how many pieces is that going to be? Maybe he had it planned out for 12 figures. It did work. We had to figure the small pieces and try to put 15 figures. That's when he added an entire series of figures, including, I think, at least one of the variant Ghostbusters, because I think the Terry Bucks are part of the first whole series, and then added two more figures. So we had, I think we had a better, stronger line because of it, but originally we didn't fall through it, and he had to, you know, he had to change his plans because, because it wasn't going to work out the way. You know, once you decide something, you can go to the factory and you come back and say, no, it's not going to work. I don't think we had to like, scrap the figure completely because of that. And, do that, but sometimes, you know, sometimes decisions don't work out, sometimes the license doesn't work out, the um, you know, license may not resonate with the buyer, the uh, items may not get purchased, uh, you know, ordered, and then, then you may end up having to cancel the lines because if you can't, if you, if you don't think the sale is going to be there for the consumers, and the definite way the retailers, then, then you know, it's not going to be really worth the price on tens of thousands of dollars of development and hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of production costs, manufacturing costs, millions of dollars of manufacturing costs. This is a million dollars, millions of dollars for the Ghostbusters series in development and manufacturing. So if we don't sell millions of dollars of materials, then we're a lot of times too, licenses won't even just let you do it. Like if they, you might just approach them with something like an idea, yeah. and they might just say, no, you can't make it. So if you get shut down real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, very <laughs> Minds change. Uh, sometimes we'll change their mind back to what to what we think works best for them. Sometimes they change their mind after they make a decision, and we have to we have to work with that. But you know, it's just if they've changed it, if they, if they change their mind, they change their mind. Sometimes buyers change their mind. Sometimes you know, uh, sculptors change their mind. You know, everybody has changes their heart. Sometimes the president has changed his mind and decides to have sculptors on the list. It's a it's a it's a bunch of human beings working together. And, you know, it's not a it's not a robotic perfect system. But anyway, I think they're talking. About they might get this idea, I don't know, it's going to get done. But I'll give away some prizes, um, uh, just some best questions, and some of the best questions were asked. I'm going to ask a question about licensing. I've got, uh, I've got a uh, permit slide at you, so come on up and run down. Question about how things have changed over the past, uh, recent past. Uh, I've got a Captain Marvel a BBC TV program.